beautiful day, beautiful covered bridge. Hey everyone, Silver Steeler here. And Winning Image Photography. So we bought our first 10 ounce coin the other day winning. And it has a horsey on it. Is that the reason why I had to purchase this? Well, it was Valentine's Day, so. Two reasons then. Yep. Well, I gotta say, I'm not disappointed. Me either. This is from the Perth Mint. We went ahead and bought the 10 ounce silver one. We also have a one ounce one we'll show you here in a little bit. But yeah, what a beautiful coin. And it is a coin. It's 10 pounds, as you can see. And I guess that is the queen represented at the age of 89. Now, many of you, of course, recognize this design as being on the gold sovereign that they still mint to this day. We have one, a 1914 gold sovereign, which has this dragon a little bit more belly up as, being, as he's being speared by St. George rescuing the princess. This one has its paws all on the ground. And yeah, there are different variations, but you know, still a nice representation. We bought this one off Monument Metals. They had emailed me early in the day. And by the time I checked back later on in the afternoon, they were already sold out. If that tells you how silver has been selling so hot lately. I mean, I can't even get the pre-sales anymore practically, but we went ahead and threw down on this one. Glad I got it. Let's check into this bridge a little bit more. The Cumberland Covered Bridge here in Matthews, Indiana. It's in Grant County. We're lucky enough to live in a state that still has 98 covered bridges in existence and many of them still used by traffic. This being one of them. This particular bridge was built in 1877. Imagine that, one year before the Morgan dollar was minted and still being used for traffic. That's amazing. Now let's see if I can go down this bridge without a vehicle coming. This is like my third attempt and so far I haven't had a lot of luck and I hear a vehicle coming so well let me uh, let you see this bridge being used. Let me get off to the side here. I'll go figure it's a truck. Yeah. Alright. Nope. Oh, almost tripped. I'm good. Hey buddy how you doing? Hey, he's got a dog. Cool. Well, as you can see it's still being used. Alright. From Wikipedia. Cumberland Covered Bridge, also known as the Matthews Covered Bridge, is a historic covered bridge spanning the Mississinawa River at Jefferson Township in Matthews, Grant County, Indiana. It was originally called the New Cumberland Covered Bridge. It was built in 1877 by William Parks of Marion, Indiana. This Howell Trust Bridge is 181 feet long. It is the only remaining covered bridge in Grant County. In 1999, it was totally refurbished. They did a heck of a job. Imagine, this thing lasted for over 100 years before it needed to be refurbished. That's amazing. To tell you how well they built these bridges back in the day, in 1913, it sustained a flood and floated half a mile downstream. It was returned upstream on rollers dragged by horses and received just minimal damage. The foundations were raised an additional three feet at that time. A 1958 flood also ravished the bridge, but only loosened up a few boards, so it's definitely stood the test of time. Took a walk along the trail, ended up here, thought it was a nice spot to show off this one ounce coin. We got one of those as well as the 10 ounce, and you'll see them here side by side and look at the incredible difference. But while we do that, why don't you explain a little bit more of the story behind this coin. The legend of St. George and the Dragon. St. George traveled for many months by land and sea until he came to Libya. Here he met a poor hermit who told him that everyone in the land was in great distress for a dragon had long ravaged the country. Every day, said the old man, he demands the sacrifice of a beautiful maiden, and now all the young girls have been killed. The king's daughter alone remains, and unless we can find a knight who can slay the dragon, she will be sacrificed tomorrow. 
the king of Egypt will give his daughter in marriage to the champion who overcomes this terrible monster. When St. George heard the story, he was determined to try to save the princess, so he rested that night in the hermit's hut and at daybreak set out to the valley where the dragon lived. When he drew near, he saw a little procession of women headed by a beautiful girl dressed in pure Arabian silk. The Princess Sabra was being led by her attendants to the place of death. The knight spurred his horse and overtook the ladies. He comforted them with brave words and persuaded the princess to return to the palace. Then he entered the valley. As soon as the dragon saw him, it rushed from its cave, roaring with a sound louder than thunder. Its head was immense and its tail 50 feet long. But St. George was not afraid. He struck the monster with a spear, hoping he would wound it. The dragon scales were so hard that the spear broke into a thousand pieces and St. George fell from his horse. Fortunately, he rolled under an enchanted orange tree against which poison could not prevail so that the venomous dragon was unable to hurt him. Within a few minutes, he had recovered his strength and was able to fight again. He struck the beast with his sword, but the dragon poured poison on him and his armor split in two. Once more, he refreshed himself under the orange tree and then, with his sword in his hand, he rushed at the dragon and pierced it under the wing where there were no scales so that it fell dead at his feet. Well, there you go, everyone. I think that about sums it up. Nicely done there, Winnie. We'll have to come back here when it greens up and uh, bring the drone out so we can get some overhead shots of this the next time we're here. And we will be back again. This isn't too far from home at all. No. Fairly close. Well, everyone, this is going to bring this one to a close. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, everyone.